Um, so hi everyone and thank you for having me here today and for sticking around. <laughs> um, uh, I'm here to speak about the research I've conducted for my final year thesis as my undergraduate degree in psychology, which was an assessment of family members' needs after brain injury. Um, and just for, as another acronym, acronym to add in for the day, ABI there is um, <laughs> acquired brain injury. <laughs> um, so just to give you some background information, acquired brain injury refers to brain injury that occurs after birth and is non-degenerative, and it can have traumatic causes such as road traffic accidents or falls, um, but also non-traumatic causes such as strokes or hemorrhages. And um, traumatic brain injury is considered to be one of the leading causes of death and disability in individuals aged 1 to 44 worldwide. And within Ireland, it's estimated that between 9 and 11,000 people sustain TBIs yearly, with further 8,000 people being diagnosed with stroke every year. So it has a significant impact on the Irish population. And brain injury itself can cause significant changes in the life of the individual, um, so it can, can impact their, the way they think, their behaviour, their emotions, um, and it can also have an impact on their psychosocial situation, so it can result in a change in uh, relationships and also their employment status. Um, but brain injury not only affects the individual who sustained the injury, but also their entire family. And research has shown that caring, uh, the role of a caregiver is often assumed by family members. And this can sometimes have a negative effect on those family members and can cause um, things like increased emotional distress and depression and also um, decreased quality of life and independence. And so it's for these reasons that it's very important to identify family members' needs and to do something about that to try to support them. There has been um, a significant amount of research conducted worldwide um, exploring family members' needs and there are common themes that are ident identified throughout. So, for example, family members often highlight the need to receive information about the health of their family member, particularly in the early stages of rehabilitation when they're um, just going through this new experience. Uh, additionally, they often identify the need to receive information about the services and also how to access those services because sometimes this information isn't made available to family members. And then they've identified the need to receive support in reintegrating their loved one back into the community following their brain injury and also support in advocating for both uh, the individual with brain injury, injury and themselves in getting the support <coughs> that's necessary. And then family members often highlight the, the need for ongoing support for themselves, be that financial, practical, emotional. There's always ongoing support needs that family members um, have. And then there's specific re research that looks at the perceived importance of certain needs and the extent to which these needs are met. Um, and that uses a standardised questionnaire that was used in, that I used in my study. And the results worldwide show that um, family members often feel that the need to receive information about the health and functioning about their loved one with brain injury, they rate that as most important and also most likely to be met. So they are receiving some important information. <coughs> and then with regard to the needs that are rated as less important and also less likely to be met, these can vary depending on the country and the cultural situation. Um, however, these needs tend to be related to practical, emotional and instrumental or, um, or sorry, and professional support as well. Um, so the aims of my study were to explore the current situation of family members' needs in Ireland. So I looked at family members' um, met and unmet needs and also the perceived importance of these needs. And then I also looked at the relevance of important needs um, not being met within the Irish context. And then, as I mentioned, I use a standardised um, questionnaire so I could compare the results in Ireland to those found internationally. Um, and finally, I asked <coughs> um, an open-ended question to the end of the questionnaire, asking family members how their needs could ideally be met in order to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the situation in Ireland and to try to get some suggestions of how mem family members' needs could be met. Um, so, recruitment involved contacting family members um, who were involved with an organisation called Headway, who provides support um, and rehabilitation to individuals whose lives have been affected by brain injury. So 29 family members were recruited and they completed the um, family needs questionnaire either in person or over the phone. And the family needs questionnaire um, presents family members with a list of 37 needs and ask them to rate um, the importance of each need from not important to very important, and also the extent to which each need has been met in their own experience. 
and it has six subscales, as you can see there, um, that tap into different categories of needs. So, for example, within the health information subscale, our needs related kind of directly to the individual with brain injury and getting um, honest and accurate information about them, while in the instrumental support scale are more um, practical support needs, such as help um, around the house. And then, as mentioned, the open-ended question was added to the end of that questionnaire. So various um, statistical analyses were conducted then. And um, the results show that of the needs most frequently rated as met, the majority came from the health information subscale. Um, and this is similar to literature that's found worldwide. So um, that's a positive finding of the study that family members in Ireland are being provided with medically relevant information, particularly in the early stages of rehabilitation. Um, one interesting finding of the study was that this sample identified the need to have complete information about drug or alcohol problems and treatment as met. And this came up within the Irish population, but wasn't one of the most frequently met needs um, in, within other countries. And so it's possible that given our history of substance and particularly alcohol use and abuse, that um, family members who are involved with the healthcare system are potentially getting information about these issues when they're involved with the healthcare service. And then another interesting finding was that um, this sample rated the need to discuss my feelings about the patient with someone who has gone through the same experience from the emotional support subscale as met. And needs from this particular subscale are typically rated as not met within the literature. But it's possible that because this um, particular sample were involved with sport organisations such as Headway who offer family members the opportunity to meet others who have gone through similar experiences that they're having this important emotional support need met, which is a positive finding. Um, it's important just to note that although these were the needs that were most likely to be met, only one of these needs was met by over 50% of the sample. So that suggests huge variation in family members' experiences of needs being met. So although these are net being met by some, they're not being met. Not everybody is having these needs met. Um, looking at the unmet needs then, and these came from a range of subscales, um, including professional and emotional support, which is in line with the literature. Um, so it appears that family members are being provided with medically relevant information, but they're not being provided with information on how to um, manage the individual's um, <coughs> behaviours. So for example, the majority of the sample rated the need to be shown what to do when the patient is acting upset or strange as not met. So family members aren't being provided with the information and education and skills that can help them to, um, to manage and cope with these difficulties. Another trend in unmet needs was a uh, lack of emotional support, uh, particularly within the sample was to do with uh, future planning, so things like help preparing for the worst and getting over my fears and doubts for the futures. Um, so this is an area that services potentially need to touch into and uh, help family members cope with. And I also um, explored the relevance of these needs uh, not being met within the sample. So um, <coughs> of the needs that were not met, half of them were rated as either important or very important um, by the family members. So this suggests there are very important needs that are not being met within the Irish context. And there's a number of reasons that this is potentially happening, um, such as a lack of adequate services and also a breakdown in communication between family members and healthcare professionals about um, the rehabilitation goals and capabilities of family members following brain injury. Uh, looking at importance ratings then, um, the needs that were rated as most important typically came from the health information subscale, which is in line with the literature worldwide. So these typically, again, related to receiving honest and accurate information about the individual's functioning. So things like having um, understanding their problems, um, their physical problems, and also problems with thinking. Um, but again, it's just important to note that a huge range of people rated these importance, sorry, between 14.3 and 60.7% of the sample rated these important needs as not met. So again, this shows huge variation in family members' experiences of having these needs being met. Um, and then the needs that had the lower importance ratings came from a range of subscales, again, typically related to family members being able to share the burden of care or have support. 
So things such as being able, um, having others understand um, the patient's difficulties or having help around the house. Um, as you can see there, there's a number of them from the emotional support subscale that are rated as less important. Um, it's interesting that um, items from this subscale are consistently rated as less important in studies using this questionnaire, while in qualitative research, uh, family members frequently highlight the need for their ongoing emotional support needs. So it's possible that um, family members assume a role of responsibility and um, often, as has been mentioned here throughout the day, put their own needs, or sorry, put the needs of their loved one before their own, so that um, when given a list of needs like this, they tend to rate <coughs> the needs related to their loved one as more important than their own. And then finally, um, thematic analysis was conducted on the responses uh, suggesting how needs could ideally be met, and this actually resulted in family members presenting more needs that weren't necessarily identified in the questionnaire, but in doing so, um, they provided suggestions of how these needs could be met. So, for example, it was suggested that family members aren't given information about the services available and how to access them, um, which can leave them without the necessary support or discharge, um, yeah, supports in place before their loved one is discharged. So with this came the suggestion that family members should be provided with an information pack um, that contains such information and allows them to access services or contact services before their loved one is discharged. Um, so five categories of needs were identified from this, um, from the responses. So family members felt that their needs could be met through the provision of information, particularly about services and services that are suitable to individuals with different functionings after their brain injury. And also, um, it was stated that information should be provided to family members in terms that they can understand and also at various points throughout the rehabilitation stage, as it can be difficult to take in information when you're going through something as difficult as a brain injury. Um, Family members also highlighted the need for a uh, continuation of care and they suggested that um, having, or sorry, um, working with healthcare professionals in order to put in, put in place a clear discharge plan would help, in, would help to meet this need. And they also um, suggested that um, a support line that they can contact would be helpful in order to help with the day-to-day -day issues that can arise, such as behavioural problems. Um, family members also highlighted that increased support and recognition from the government would help to meet their needs. And then they also identified that um, there's an increased need for involvement with care, um, both in their early rehabilitation stages and throughout. And it's important to note then that family members identified the positive impact that support organisations such as Headway are having in meeting some of these needs. So it was frequently stated that it was because of their contact with Headway that the family members were able to say that some of these important needs could be met, which was a positive finding of the study. <coughs> so in conclusion then, it appears the family members are being provided with medically relevant information, um, but they're not being educated or provided with the skills that, can, that are necessary in caring um, and managing um, their loved one's uh, behaviour following brain injury. Um, and then, of course, there's a need for ongoing care and support for family members, be it practical, emotional, professional. Um, there's a need for ongoing support. So with this comes implications for services to provide family members uh, with information about the services and how to access them, particularly in the early, early stages. To involve family members in the rehabilitation and to communicate clearly with them the rehabilitation goals. And also to reiterate to family members the importance of their own support needs because these can often get lost um, when caring for a family member. So it's important for services to um, acknowledge family members and to try to provide support to them where they can. Thank you.